Okay, so if you have a rational expression, sometimes they can be overly complicated. And what I mean by that is, remember, a rational expression is just a polynomial divided by a polynomial. But sometimes you can actually cancel stuff away and make it even simpler without changing the value. So I want to show you how you can actually simplify a rational expression if someone hands you one. And what I want to do first is illustrate this with a simple example, which I plan to solve incorrectly. So here we go. So what I could say here is the following, 2x plus 2 and divide it by 2. OK. What someone might say is, well, OK, great. Um, let's just cancel those 2's off there. And what I'd get is the following. What I would see is, if I cancel those away, you see, I would just have 2x. See that canceling? That's some real fancy canceling. In fact, it's fancy false canceling because that is not allowed. In fact, this is a classic mistake. And, and if you're tended to do that, if you're tended to cancel something away, it's sort of sitting out there being added or subtracted to something else. It's a great mistake to make now and then forever hold your peace. Because in fact, this is my classic mistake, classic algebraic mistake number four. And it's the subtracting. I'm sorry, that's not the subtracting mistake. What I'm saying it's the. It's not. It's not. What am I saying? Number four. Why would I say that's a classic mistake right there? That's a classic blooper mistake. But this is actually classic mistake number three. It actually is moving up the charts, folks, really fast. It's just jumping up. It's going to be number one any day now, unless you stop it. Only you can prevent that from being number one. So don't buy into it. It's number three. It's the canceling mistake. And you have to remember that we only cancel factors. We don't cancel individual items like that, individual terms that are being added or subtracted. Okay? It's a classic mistake. So, so this is wrong, by the way. Here I am having this thing on the web all that time, but it's wrong. So now how do you use correctly? What we have to do is we have to factor it out, a common factor, and then cancel factors on top and bottom. And I'll show you why. So in this case, for example, what I would see is that I could factor this out, and I a 2 out of the top. It's a common factor. In fact, it's the greatest common factor. Then I cancel like this. I mean, I have this now. Now, notice what I have here is a multiple of 2 on the top and a multiple of 2 on the bottom. So if you really want to be pedantic, which you will never do in life, but let me just show this to you. I could write it like this. 2 times x plus 1. And on the bottom here, I can write this 2. And on the bottom here, I can write the invisible 1 that follows us everywhere. But see, now you can see that since this is a product, 2 over 2 is the number 1, right? It's still the 1. And if you cancel that away, 1 times anything is the anything. So I can cancel that away without changing the value. And so what I see is the correct factorization is this. It's a very simple example, I admit, but it's an important point that you don't want to just cancel individual little things. You want to make sure you have a common factor on everywhere, including the bottom, and then cancel away. OK, now while I'm with that, let me show you. In fact, let me show this to you in an even more dramatic way. So let's take a look at the same example once again. OK, so this is the exact same problem. You can see 2x plus 2 all divided by 2. And the important thing to do is to first factor out that 2. So if you factor it out, you see, whoop. Now it's a factor. And I could take these guys and just throw them away. And I'm just left with the answer, which is this. OK, so that's the idea. That's the idea behind it. All right, let's try now some more exotic ones. In fact, maybe I'll just give you a chance to try these things. I don't know. What do you think? 20x plus 10 all divided by 30x plus 15. Oh, what the heck? I'll do this one for you. OK, I look at this thing and I say, gee whiz, uh, this is gonna, something's going to happen here because I guess too many common factors going on here. That's what I'm thinking in my head. So the first thing I do is see I can factor out a 10 on the top. So let me actually do that. 10, and that would give me a 2x plus 1. And then on the bottom, I can factor out, it looks like a 15. And then I see a 2x plus 1. And so these guys can be canceled. And then even here, I can do a little cancellation. And so I can do a little cancellation here. I could take the 5 out of here and the 5 out of here, and that would leave me with a 2 thirds. So this equals 2 thirds. 
That's great. Um, there's just a little teeny thing that I just remind you of, and that is the domain of this. The domain of this. The domain of this is anything except where the bottom is zero. And when is the bottom zero? You can see that happens when x equals negative a half. Right? If I put a negative a half here, that would produce a minus 15 plus 15 is zero. So in fact, this equals that. This is the same thing as two thirds, as long as x doesn't equal minus a half. If x equals minus a half, then in fact this doesn't even exist. So it doesn't equal two thirds. Just a little point to remind you that in fact, only can look where the thing is defined. And if it's not defined, don't look. Okay. Hey, now it's your turn. How about this one? 10x squared plus 8x all over 4x squared. These are sort of fun in a way. I know, okay, you don't think it's fun, but I sort of like it because you know you can do it. You factor, you do it, you cancel. I think it's sort of neat. Anyway, give it a try. Tell me what you think. 